What is up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here, a mighty merry hi do to all of you at the Nerd Castle playing the Banner Saga one more time. In the previous episode, as a little recap, the dredge had come up out of the forest. You see these shadowy assholes right there? That's them. They had rolled out and they were trying to slaughter us all, which is not cool because we have a lot of children around. And slaughtering children? generally looked down upon in civilized society. So now we are gathering up in the Great Hall and coming up with a plan with how we're going to get the hell away from them. So let's do that. Rook, thank the gods that you made it. The Great Hall is in an utter din, filled as it is with dozens of terrified families. Don't stop worrying yet. I haven't. What in the depths is going on? Dredge milling around, ransacking houses? The chieftain's wife finds you pushing through the crowd. They must know we're here. Why haven't they attacked? We've got kind of like a Galadriel type individual. Oddleaf. Which, I don't know if that means Oddleaf. That'd be kind of a weird name to have, but whatever. I don't judge. I don't judge. Don't know. I wouldn't expect it to last. I've made some decisions, but tell me straight. What would you both do in my place? I'd have left by now. They're already outside the doors. Not so easily done. Rook? I trust Ivor on this one. He's twice my size and he's fought these things before. The chieftain sighs a deep and heavy breath, slumping. He looks years older. I imagined us fighting back and saving the town, but... Nonsense. Ivor's right, of course. We can't just wait to be slaughtered. Where do we go? If Dredge are coming down from the north... Frostveller to the west. It's close and it has walls. I intend to be free of Skogir in one push. Nobody left behind. I wouldn't. If they follow us, we're done. What do you suggest? Let me create a distraction and then go. I'll catch up on the road to Frostfeather. That sounds like suicide, Ivor. Or we can say he's right and we can help with the distraction. Or we can set the town on fire as we leave. Let's do that. That is one thing I will not do. We will return here one day whether I live to see it or not. Okay, then allow me to go with Ivor and we'll both create a distraction. I'm not one for skittering off like a rat. The chieftain thinks for a long moment. I didn't ask for advice just to ignore it. Promise me you're not throwing your lives away on this. That wasn't part of my plan. Ivor? Nope. Then I'm coming with you. That catches you by surprise. The chieftain rubs his chin but doesn't argue. From the training he's given a let, you no doubt she can handle a bow. Or the, from the training she's given a let. Credit where credit is due, of course. Fine. I'll get the townspeople ready. Make your move, Ivor. We'll leave when you're clear. I really like the pacing of this game. I like, like, it, it's straight into the thick of the shit, and I like that a lot. I want Gil with us, says Ivor. If something happens to us, I need him to tell the chieftain. Ivor goes off to find him. Alette finds you. I know what you're doing. You have to let me come, she says. Don't leave me, please. I'll be good. All right, Alette. Promise to listen. I promise, she says. Ivor soon finds you both. Let's go. Remember, we're not trying to fight them all. We're just getting their attention. You step into the town courtyard where you can already see Dredge in every direction. Ivor starts banging his shield and swearing at them. We kill a few, he shouts, and the rest will follow. You steal yourself for a tough fight. Alright, let's do this thing. Ivor's injured, so I'm going to put Eggle up first, even though his armor is way lower. We're still going to have our tanks in the front line. Let's have a look. I don't know what she does, but we're going to put her in the middle. I can only assume that given the fact that her daughter uses a bow like pretty well, she probably uses a bow equally as well. So we'll leave the order as it is right now, and we'll just hope for the best. Trigagagav is a bonus character anyways, so we'll leave him up in the rear, ready to go. I hear he likes it there the best anyways. You go from talking about a man's wick to talking about looking at <laughs> looking at assins and behinds. Oh well, what can you do? It's the Nerd Castle. Our deployment here is a little bit odd. We are separated and surrounded. We're going to have to make a hard charge in this direction, I think. I'm going to have them fall back like so, because my big worry is that these three are all going to push this way, in which case he's already wounded, which means he's pretty much useless to us at the moment until we get this first combat underway. 8 and 10, what do we have there? 8 and 10, I think the tab key allows us to look even better. So 10 and 15, oh, there's another one up there too, so it's 4. So yeah, definitely what I want to do in this case is we're going to make a hard charge this way. I would rather lose Eggle than to lose him. I need, I need what's his name? I always forget his name. I need Ivor back up and running as quickly as possible. So let's say that we're ready. And let's make a move. We're going to move first. Let's be aggressive. Be E aggressive in this case. I'm going to have him stonewall. And 
And as I had hoped, I'm gonna try and keep him on this side for now. We're just gonna keep him sort of isolated. And we're gonna wait and see how this whole thing plays out over here before we go any further. Now from what I understand, his shield wall was supposed to block 3 damage. And it doesn't appear to have done so. He took full damage on that swing. Unless that was a 6. Which is possible. It was, it was a 6. Okay. Well then, let's get all of our archers into range. We can summon an ally to the battlefield? Wait, hold on, how do I do that? Oh, that's just Mark Prey. Wait, who summons? Somebody here I just saw. Oh, he does it. Okay, I had the wrong guy selected. Let's make our attack here. And I'm gonna go all out on this one. We, we have to do something to reduce this guy's strength. If this guy decides to move up here on the archer, which he didn't, he resisted the damage entirely, but he got knocked down as though it hurt. <laughs> it's kind of like, it's hard to look like a badass when you just got knocked down like a punk like that. It's very, very difficult to look beefy. Oh well. From here, she can use Thread the Needle. Which I think is a good plan right now because she'll run through two guys. So I'm going to move her to there. And although this might be, oh, she has to be lined up with them. Unfortunate. Let's start off by getting rid of a bit of his armor, I guess. That one's gonna try and flank us. We are desperately surrounded right now. What's her ability? She has the same ability as her daughter. Okay, so if any armor damage has been done, she deals extra damage. And then she traps one tile with one arrow, causing strength damage if walked over. Interesting. Well, she's got a 90% chance to hit right there and a 70 right there. I don't really know which way to push this one. This is a really kind of interesting battle. The one strength damage isn't like a big deal. We can deal that already. So if she got to put down the trap and then attack, it would be worthwhile. But as it stands right now, not really the greatest setup. So let's deal some damage to him, I guess, with regards to his armor. And so now we've got Trig V. I'm going to put Trig V right. I'm a little scared of what this guy's going to do on his next turn. But we'll take that chance. That's only good for adjacent dredge, right? Okay. So what we'll do then is we'll just deal damage here. We're going to totally max power that out. Because we've got to open this battle strongly. Ooh. Okay, so he's basically going to do the same thing on this turn. We just want him to shield wall it up the entire time. Oh, no. I didn't expect that, so now we're going to have to jump in here. We don't have a choice. I'm going to sunder his armor as mightily as I possibly can. See, now they're all re-diverting to the other side of the battlefield. That's a worrisome turn of events. I'm going to go all out with willpower for now. What was his ability one more time? He does armor damage, and all allies within range automatically attack. See, I need him to be further back then. I need to put him in the back of the rotation, I think is going to be a good place for him. Because having him in the front, I don't have anybody set up just yet. I could move out to there and do the same thing. But that's going to expose him very, very badly. Who's up next? Him? Okay. Let's go ahead and we're going to take a shot at him first. Alright, so we've got a little bit of a re-diversion going right here. They've decided to shift in the mid-fight, which makes me very, very worried. I think what I would like to do is let's fall back. Thread the needle's not going to be useful for now. 
But we can continue working on his armor, I guess. She has a lot of willpower anyways, so we may as well. Nice. I really like Egir, or Edgar, or whatever the hell his name is. Agil, there we go. With her, they've all moved perfectly out of range. Disappointing, but, you know, not necessarily unexpected. We'll move her to there. And let's make a conscious effort. Unfortunate. Her strength is really, really weak. So I guess we'll start working on people who have a little bit better of armor. Oh, that's not who I wanted. I wanted him. thought I had the right guy targeted, but it appears as though I didn't. Trigvi's going to step in right here. And he's going to finish this guy off. Down he goes. Very, very nice. The sound of massive hulking stone hitting the ground. Or whatever the hell they're made out of. I mean, they could honestly be made out of just about anything. They could be <laughs> they could be made out of elephant turds, for all I know. I don't know the lore of this game. My next plan is to have him step right into the center of this group. And shield wall one more time. God, I'm so glad for that ability. That's one of those abilities that really has come around completely. With this fight right here, we need to get his strength lowered out below. If we hit him one time, his strength is going to be below our armor, which means he's not going to be combat effective anymore. So, blammo, he is now much, much weaker than initially anticipated. Little bit of damage over here to Trig V, but it shouldn't be anything too difficult to get around. We're going to start firing some arrows off in this direction so that his strength is lower than Trig V's armor. Unfortunately, it didn't get us off the hook right there, but we'll take what we can get. I'm going to start swinging her around this way, and her strength is still low, so we need to continue working on his armor. It's fine, though, because she's got loads and loads of willpower, so we can keep on spending them stars, like Mario 64. I guess Mario didn't spend stars, he just collected them. He was a bit of a miser when it came to his stars, but whatever. You guys get my point. I've made a full come around, right? It still works. Whatever. Let's go and take a shot at him for 7 damage. There it is. So there's our kill that I was searching for. Farewell, large man with tannish tabard. But my tabard's taupe. Get the color right, dick. Let's take a shot at him. He's the last remaining worry on the battlefield for me, and so I'd like to get his armor totally taken care of. And there's a deflection. Very, very nice. With these characters over here, what I would now like to consider... He can deal one damage there, or one damage there. I'm just gonna keep him curled up. That's basically how he spent this entire battle, is just curled up in the corner with his shield over his head going, Ah, don't hit me! And that's exactly how we're gonna keep it. I was hoping for a deflection right there. No such luck. However, what we can guarantee is that on this turn, we're gonna get a pretty nice beefy slash right here from our big man on campus. Oh, never mind, only two damage. I thought he was gonna do a little bit better. But the armor, the armor's too high, never mind. I'm still getting used to the game systems. It takes a little bit of doing to be able to predict what's exactly going to happen every time you attack. Took a little bit of damage back as a counterattack, very good. He deals 12 damage to 8 armor, which means he can do a 4 on that character, or he can do a 3 over there. I believe what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to test out his Mark Prey. Oh, he has to be, ah, he has to be adjacent, okay. So let's mark him as adjacent, and I wanted to test this out anyways. We're going to mark Prey here. He's now marked. Very cool. That sets you up for some really, really unique combat. That was a pretty sweet little combo they pulled off. We need to get this thing handled, though, in between here and the next turn. Otherwise, Trigvi is doomed. I'm going to have her use Thread the Needle. Very cool. That ability definitely saw us home. They could have killed off Trigvi right there, but it doesn't appear as though they've decided to go for it. Maybe consider in this case. Well, she can kill somebody. I'm going to get have her get rid of somebody that's next to Trigvi. Oh, that's right. Her strength is still too low. Weak and whack and under attack. The splatter cat story. I guess I'll kill that guy in the back then. Trig V, no! Trig -g 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 V! Well, I was hoping to make it through a battle without losing somebody, because as of yet, we still haven't made it through a single battle without losing somebody. 
Then again, whatever. He deals six damage. He can't get through that armor. I'm going to step him down to here, and he should be able to kill off this gent. We need to get him some levels. That's why I'm concerned about... There we go. I wanted to get him a bit more renowned so that he could get beefier. And over here, we're going to take what I hope will be our final strike. Oh, I guess not. Two damage done right there. His armor is still reasonably high. All things that I haven't been considering while we've been playing through. That does give Rook a chance, though, to finish out the combat with Panache. With some Aplumba. And so we don't care. There we go. Let's get back to the action here. We have limited time for each of these episodes, and I try to keep them running in a nice state. You have no problem getting the dredge to follow. Things begin to look dicey, but you're eventually able to lose them in thick woods where they have difficulty keeping up. You climb to an overlook and wait for the caravan to appear. An hour later, Oddleaf is the first to spot them. There! She points to the road. As you rejoin them, you can tell there was trouble. Some people are wounded and others are missing. A group is gathered at the rear of the caravan. Oddleaf walks beside a covered figure in the open wagon. Old fool, she says through clenched teeth. I should have stayed with him. The chieftain's death hits you like a blow to the gut. You continue on to Frost Veller in silence, Alette's hand firmly in your own. Well, I suppose we probably should have grabbed some supplies before we left. Pausing to catch your breath, you glance backwards to see the caravan stretched out past the point of safety. They're spaced out so far, you're unable to see those bringing up the rear. We've got to pull them together, says Ivor. It'd be dangerous to stop until at least the Godstone. The pass should be just ahead. Let's rally the caravan. You make your way to the rear and hoist a small child onto your shoulders. Fight for every step. Remember those who didn't make it and push onwards. The clansmen see your effort and follow suit, pushing themselves harder. Yeah, and then we got some bonus renown, too. Get more famous. That's how we do it. Well, I'm sincerely hoping that our... Oh, we have five days' worth of supplies. Okay, that makes me feel much, much better. Much better. I thought that it was just going to subtract from it. We have, like, 400 people here right now. Okay, 315. I can do maths, I promise you. It's just when I want to apply myself. I don't know. Any moment, the narrator is going to cut me off. Far enough for today, I think. After a day of misery, men and women drop their meager possessions beneath the godstone of Hridvalder. Hridvalder, I can say that word. What are we doing? We just left our homes because suddenly there were dredge. Chieftain did what I suggested, and look what he got for it. Look at these people. Somebody has to hold them together. And that's you, Rook. But you're the dredge killer around here. Yeah, a Varl. They want to listen to somebody who looks just like them. What about Oddleif? Letter, if it's easier for you. What am I supposed to do anyways? Lie? Tell them everything's gonna be alright? Gods, Rook, I don't know. Pretend you don't know- <laughs> pretend you know what you're doing, that's what the rest of us do. Well, thanks for the advice. Well, then do whatever you want. Let them fend for themselves if you can live with it. You humans are absurd, Rook. Furious when you're not in control and terrified when you are. Pull it together. Well, you're right. Think of how I feel. I'm stuck nursing a bunch of weaklings. You do care, I can tell. <laughs> Men are a plague. On the world rest than any dredge, as far as I can tell. Chats like this are why we always get along so well, Ivor. <laughs> awesome. You sleep poorly, the sun forever stuck to an eternally bright sky. Before the others rise, you find yourself staring over long, low hills covered in pine. The godstone looms overhead, the massive eyes of Hidvaldur looking in the same direction as you. Let's inspect the stone. I'm, I'm interested in the lore. The Weatherstone doesn't see many visitors. Not much reason to travel so far east. When hunters come through, they sometimes stop to give offerings out of habit more than anything else now that the gods are dead. Hridvaldr was the god of hunters and of wild beasts, occasionally seen roaming the land as both man and wolf. He was always depicted in effigy with his terrible spear. You wonder what he'd think about his woods being full of dredge now. A young girl from the caravan approaches you. I made this for you, she says, handing you a crude necklace carved from a branch she must have found nearby. Thank you for saving my mama, she says before running back to her tent. Back at your tent, you rouse Alette, who clings to your arm until she's completely awake. Bad dreams. Eventually, the camp is broken down, and it's time to move on to Frostveller. It feels like an end more than a start. We gained an item. The Bjarken Rune. Or the Barken Rune, if it's particularly loud. God. It's that rune that bothers the neighbors constantly, assuming you live in an apartment. Although, I guess dogs at houses can annoy your neighbors, too. Uh, whatever. The joke's been run out at this point. It has been run out like a stinky leper. The caravan halts when a group of men appear on the trail, weapons at their feet. We've seen the dredge in your wake, says one. 
We don't wish to meet them alone. If you'll let us join you, we'll show you a watering hole with enough animals to fill those supply wagons. An inherent fear of strangers raises mutters from the caravan. What are you doing out here alone? We were hunting here for food when the dredge found our village, says the man. When we returned, he looks away, unable to finish. I'm going to take a chance here and allow them to join us. If you'll be no trouble, you can come along, you say. The men cautiously join your ranks and prove trustworthy. The hidden, the hidden watering hole nearby is teeming with animals, and soon your supplies are nicely restocked. Cool. And we got ourselves 12 fighters, a bit of renown, plus 18 supplies. So we're up to 8 days worth of supplies, although now we've got 7 days. So we've got a week's worth of supplies left, which is never anything to scoff at. During a rest, one of the men gets too drunk and ends up splashing mead in a warrior's face. A brawl erupts. Many thrown fists and a broken bone later. The instigator, Raffensfarter, is tossed on the ground at your feet. Angry clansmen looking for satisfaction. His personal defense is little more than drooling mumbles. Let's go ahead and tie him up till he dries out. You grab a rope from the supplies and make short work of the sot. A few onlookers throw scraps at him, but mostly just walk away with a laugh, at least content that some measure has been taken. I don't feel like <laughs> there was kind of, we'll just detain him for a day or two and then it'll be all good. We just gotta wait for him to sober up. That's what they do in modern society. You get yourself in a fist fight, they send you to the drunk tank, whatever. As long as you don't hurt anybody. The caravan is visibly relieved to find a small village on the way to Frostveller with beds and fresh supplies. The locals here are shocked by the news you bring and discuss it amongst themselves while you set up nearby. Alright, we're back up in town. Hills, yeah. We can choose to rest or we can go talk with individuals. Let's go talk. <laughs> I definitely want to go talk with him in just a minute. It's, you never know what he's going to say. We'll go to the market too because I feel like we should probably... One Renown gets three supplies. So let's get ourselves up to maybe 50 supply. That seems like a nice round number that I can get around. I don't really know how the spendthrift is going to be in this game or whether I should focus myself on saving, but let's look at everything else too. We've got a tortoise band, which gives you plus two armor on rest. The king of men was known to have a ring that he would turn compulsively on his finger before rushing back into battle. Halden's razor, a well-honed razor made by Halden, gives you three will on rest. And then horse score. Shoes made from the hooves of Horseborn have long been rumored to make one faster, if not cold-hearted. I'm going to buy those for sure. Because they seem like they'd be really, really, really useful. I didn't look at the item rank on them, though. I don't know if anybody in our group can use them. Let's have a look at our Heroes Hut. And we'll just kind of pan through everybody and promote who can be promoted. Given the size of his shield, that's like a comically small sword. Although I know, in light of his, in light of history, small swords like that weren't quite common because you could stab them around from the back of a shield line, gangster style, just open people up with them. He's a raid master, so let's promote him so that he can lead our raids a little bit better. And we want to promote him for five renown. Sure, let's do it. And so he is now up to rank two. Let's have a look at his stats. And I feel like armor might be a really, really good choice for him. So let's raise him up. In order to tank, he's going to have to have higher armor. His strength is a little bit weak. His strength is not exactly what I would want in a tank, but if we want to build him up to be a tank, I think it's going to be a very good idea to get that armor squared away first, and then we'll give him a little bit of extra strength. I suppose we could evenly distribute it, like so. Why not? Next up on the list, it looks like Oddleif is ready to go, so we'll promote her. And with Oddleif, the interesting thing is that her armor is pretty terrible, but her strength is really bad too. So I think what I'm going to do is I could increase her link ability. What this does right here, if you missed the first episode, is this determines how much of her willpower she can use in a single turn. I think instead, though, I'm going to raise her strength up to the max to increase the chance. Since she's a ranged character, she kind of falls into the same category that we were looking in with Leif and Alette. I'm sorry, not Leif and Alette. We were looking at with Rook and Alette. With Rook and Alette, we want their strength to be high so that they can bypass armor earlier on in the fight. Having a higher armor is not really going to matter for them because if I can do my job properly, I'm trying to keep my archers out of melee combat. We'll confirm that. And who else is ready to go? Nobody. I thought we had way more upgrades than that, but I guess I'm wrong. We also have some stuff we can hand out. And I believe I would give it to Trigvi were he not already wielding his necklace. There's a 10% chance that he'll deal double damage. That is a cray cray ability. Oh, that's rank 3 anyway, so it's going to be a bit before we can actually use it. We also have the Barkin Rune, which we might consider giving to our tank, Eggle. It gives him a baseline 15% chance to dodge strength attacks. A very good ability for somebody that's presumably going to be tanking a large portion of his time away. 
for everybody else. We gotta wait for another level up before we can use the hoof whatevers. Now then, let's go ahead and have our conversation with the various people. Eggle, bring forth conversation. How's the arm, Eggle? You find Eggle just outside of the camp practicing his sword swings. I saw you taking some hard hits out there. Eh, yeah, I'm great. Well, not great considering everything that's, well, I'm fine. My arm's fine, that is. It's a strong shield. It's Rook, right? I know we haven't talked much before now. But if you want, you can just call me Gil. Alright, Gil. I wanted to let you know that I meant what I said before about making sure nothing happens to Alette. I've never seen a shield like that before. Yeah, I doubt there's many. My father made this. It's solid metal. Really heavy. But I've been practicing with it since I was a kid. I used to spend a lot of time just getting used to lifting it. He raises it up to show you. Pretty good with it now. It's the only thing left of my father's that I have. Then when my mother died, she gave it to me. Well, before she died, that is. Seems you're pretty protective of Alette, right? Well, she's... I don't want to get her hurt. You can see his cheeks begin to turn bright red. Well, don't worry. She can take care of herself, too. I know. I didn't mean... Easy, Gil. I know what you meant. Ivor seems to think you're pretty good, though. Yeah? Did he say that? That's good. I'm trying. Never had to fight anything like Dredge before, but... I don't know what else to do, and how many people get to train with a Varl, right? Just seems like I could be able to help someone. That's what I want to be. I'll be heading back to camp. You stay strong. I will. Oh, and if you need something, let me know. I can do anything you need. Between you and Ivor, I think we're going to be okay. I can tell. So I guess he's going to be our positive rosebud in the middle of the crowd here. Let's go talk to Trigigigigavi, who's decided to move from down there on up to the Ox Hill. See what he has to say. Trigvi, guess I better thank you for helping us out back there. Trigvi turns his head, eyes wide as though something was stalking him. Uh, nice beard, Rook, but that's not why I'm here. Oh, okay. Why are you here? Fat clansman. What? They eat, eat, eat. Don't know how to kill a thing, Rook. He rolls the R in Rook gratuitously while holding out his spear for you to inspect. Look at this thing. They grow on trees. I'm gonna roll every one of his R's from now on. You can make this from a tree. My advice? <laughs> Show them how to stick some pigs or stick a rabbit. A bird. You can stick almost anything. <laughs> That's way more fun than it should be. You think carefully about how to respond to that. Have you always been this way, Trigvi? Have I always been Trigvi? Dumb question, Rook. Look, I hear what they say behind my back. Trigvi's handsome. Trigvi's brave. But you're the right man for this job. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Any more helpful advice? Well, I'm glad you finally asked. Don't trust a man unless they have faces and use their mouths. A man will look you look at you right through his helmet and lie. Should I trust you, Trigvi? Come on, Rook. Am I wearing a helmet? You think carefully about how to respond to that. I've got to go, Trigvi. I get it. We all got things to do. Me? I was just about to go swimming. Well, at least you're keeping clean. Nobody comes looking for you in a pool of water, you know. Don't let me waste too much time there, okay? We'll come get you before we leave. I'll see you around. Only if you keep your eyes open, Rook. You can't help but hope there was nothing sinister about that last comment. <laughs> I do like the characterization right here. I think Stoic has done a really good job at, given the brief amount of time that the characters are on screen, they've done a very good job at making sure that each character at least has their own personality. So from Trigvi in the beginning, I expected him to more or less be crazy, but he's got some sanity left in there. He's just kind of looking at situations differently, and also there's a little bit of crazy mixed in. I think I'm going to break off the episode right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in this, the next episode of our The Banner Saga playthrough. If you wanted to support Stoic Studios, look down below, grab the download link. The game was $24.99 last I checked. Unless you pre-ordered it, then it was $19.99. See you guys next time. Take care out there, everybody, and farewell.